And hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and domestic uh, calendar, economic calendar for Wednesday, the 26th of October 2016. Hope you're having a good trading week. It was a good day in stocks, at least, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, Forex was fine. Futures were kind of slow. Market was slow, but we still pulled off a couple of nice stock trades. Uh, with some really good, decent moves, so can't complain there. Here's a look at the ES front month futures contract. I don't have anything new to say here. This is the daily chart of the broad market in futures form, which is the proper technical way to look at the market. We're still sitting right where we were. See the last three months worth of reports and previews, and it's all the same story. <laughs> still operating under the 13 sell signal, still under the risk line, still haven't hit the red static trend line, which should be the target on the 13. Not much going on. Uh, so, Okay, let's go through the major indices as we usually look at them. Uh, crude oil dropping back over a buck to 49.42, closing under 50 for the first time in a few weeks. Gold up $11.30. Got the S&P closing down eight. Uh, NDX down 18 and a half after new closing highs the other day on Monday. Uh, Sox down one. Biotech's down 13 and then the 69. And the VIX up 44 cents to 13.46. The trend closes at 1.21. That leaves the 10-day moving average right around 1. NASDAQ volume only 1.4 billion shares. Again, we continue to struggle volume-wise. Uh, by the way, look at that 10-day moving average of volume. 1.9, 1.5. Advanced, uh, did we even have that in the holidays last year? Yeah, I guess it gets down there. But, man, that is just horrible. Uh, advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ, negative 1,035 on the New York, negative 615. Google loses $7.19 after new closing highs the prior day. Apple gains 60. If I take in a minute, we'll look at the five minute chart of Apple and post market trading. Uh, Amazon down 291. Netflix down 82 cents after some recent highs. Tesla down 42 cents. All right, let's take a look at the five-minute charts. This is Apple over the last two days. What I'm going to do is instead, look at my time templates. Let's go to 24-hour uh, charts at this point in time, and let's see what Apple's doing here in the aftermarket. Uh, a little bit of trading, and then the earnings come out. They haven't reopened it yet, so we, we don't know yet where Apple's going to open post-earnings, <coughs> which came out after the bell. So that'll be uh, interesting to see, of course. So here's a look at the futures. This is the uh, ES. You know, and again, small gap down from the session, filled the gap quickly, um, then dropped back down about an hour later, bottomed out over lunch, last two hours of the day, two and a half, three hours of the day, was a three, four-point range, just horrible, nothing you can do in that. NASDAQ side, look at two days here, we're in a 20-point range on the NASDAQ, that's pathetic. Uh, today was actually, believe it or not, entirely inside of the prior day's range, and we have a gap to fill below. All right, so what do we have uh, to look forward to tomorrow? Uh, in terms of economic data, there's nothing major. We've got um, the MBA Mortgage Index at 7 a.m., International Trade and Goods at 8.30, New Home Sales at 10, and Crude Oil Inventories at 10.30. Uh, still to come this week, uh, the weekly jobless claims numbers, but more importantly, the first look at GDP for the third quarter. And we still have a lot of earnings coming out Wednesday and Thursday. I'm sure that obviously everybody knows by now that that plays a major role in the market. This doesn't tend to slow things down this much volume-wise, especially as usually there's stocks that trade a lot of volume after the earnings. So this volume drop-off is highly unusual, but you get a lot of strange intraday action, flat, waiting for the next set of earnings, et cetera. So we got about two more days left of that. Uh, keep in mind, Friday uh, is not the end of the month. Monday is the last day of the month. So Monday is statement day. It's also Halloween, so people get things, get, do some things on Halloween uh, in the evening. And uh, so, you know, I don't think Monday is going to be exciting. I don't know that Friday would be exciting. Hopefully we can get something out of Wednesday or Thursday still. And then after that, you're into, a, you know, a one-week stretch before the time change, the election, and everything else. Uh, it be interesting to see what we get when this starts to shake free. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading Wednesday.